Hmm. Hello there, skeptic squids, and welcome to the lab workbench. Today I'm just going to give you a quick little tour of how to prepare XPS or X-ray photo electron spectroscopy sample holders for this amazing little machine behind me. Excuse the noise, it's a loud environment and I'm going to do my best to speak clearly and improve the audio in post. So let me get this camera situation facing on the bench and let's get started. And welcome to the workbench. Now the first thing we're going to do is glove up and the reason being is that you don't want the oils from your fingers to get onto the sample holders. The reason you don't want the oil to get on the fingers is because it's going to cause degassing issues because we're using an analysis chamber which is at a pressure of 10 to negative 10 millibar which is also known as an ultra high vacuum. Now we don't want to be hurting that vacuum. So once we are gloved up we are going to need a few tools. Um, force we need is uh, usual tweezers, polymer tip tweezers, a Kim wipe so that we can actually put our samples on something and don't have to make it touch the surface of the table. We will also obviously need a bunch of sample holders which is these little things right here. These are actually laser cut stainless steel samples and uh, we'll be mounting the samples on there. But before we can do that, we have to prep the samples, which is the core of this video. To the extra tools we will need is a scissor and the most important part, carbon tape. You know, the kind of thing you find in, you know, in the kitchen sink, cupboard. So, what you start off with, what I like to do, is I like to... I'm not sure if this is focusing. Ah, it is actually focusing. So, what I like to do is I like to lift off a tiny bit with my fingers like that. And when I come in with the scissors on an angle like this, right about there. So that's how you can gauge how much you're cutting off. You don't need a big sample. You only need a small bit just to cover the center of that sample holder. Now obviously you want to be conservative with these sort of things because it's actually quite damn expensive. So we will cut off a sample like that and I'm doing an angle so that it just gently rests like that. Now this is fine because our samples that we're going to put on there, like a powder or a crystal or whatever, is not actually going to touch the bottom part of the carbon fiber. Now XPS or um, X-ray photo uh, electric spectroscopy, it's quite a surface technique, so it's not going to penetrate, well the X-rays will penetrate, but we're not going to be seeing the electrons that come off at the bottom through that into the stainless steel. We only care about the top layer there, and that's why there's a protective coating on there. So I'm going to use this little tweezer here, and what I like to do is I like to gently just touch the surface there. Now the adhesion, or the adhesive I should say rather, keeps that from floating about. And there's also no wind in the lab so this is not an issue. And if I turn it around you can see that it's carbon tape, pitch black. So what I like to do is I like to put it in the center. Now you can see that I've covered quite a bit big part from the stainless steel sample which is actually a bit too much but since this is just demonstration I'm allowed to do it once so I like to gently just press it on there now obviously the more things surface you touch the more oils you get on your gloves and the more oils you will get on the sample now a tiny bit is not gonna kill you it's not the end of the world because it will degas it will hurt the vacuum slightly but if it's a tiny bit, it's fine. Obviously, if you're going to start touching this with your bare hands, bare hands, things are going to get problematic. So what I like to do then is to take a tiny little cotton button, or like you Americans call a Q-tip, 
and just gently, you can see I can either hold the back side of the sample holder with a tweezer, and I can just gently press on the surface like that. Just gently. The adhesion is enough to keep it there. And there we go. That is our sample prepped. Now this goes into a special little container called sample holders for power samples. Okay, that might actually have blown out the camera. And then you can just store it in there on the rest. Just like that. So, I'm gonna do one more just for demonstration. And, well, that's the end of the video. So, grab a sample. It's also important, once you pick out a sample, now these have been cleaned by myself, but obviously if you're working with people in the lab, you have to keep a standard of cleaning your samples. So you need to make sure every sample you pick out is visually clean. So again, like I said, I keep the scissor at an angle and I cut off a small bit like that. The reason I keep it at an angle is so that once it cuts off, it actually falls just ever so gently on the flat part of the uh, scissor. If you don't do that, I've noticed that the sample can fall and it can fall off the glue side on the table. And then you destroy a piece of tape, which is obviously not exactly what you want. There we go, pick up the sample. Now, I've got it quite wonky there because I'm trying to illustrate it on the camera. But uh, I'll just cut it off like that. And another thing is you need to make sure that you're putting it quite center in the sample holder. The reason you want to do that is because the little eye, the beam of x-rays and analysis falls in the center. Now, if you put this off center, you have to adjust the beam for every individual sample, which can get really tedious really quickly. So I'll just gently put some pressure on here. And that is our second sample holder prepped for our powder samples, which is something I'll do in another video to show you how that's done. So I can just put that in there, nice and safe, and ready for our researchers to put their samples on there. Now, the reason we prep everything like that beforehand is because once you are, they have to load a bunch of powder onto the samples, it can get really tedious to have to cut out everything. Also, you're touching a lot of equipment and that can cause an addition of uh, contaminants. So if you only have one tweezer to touch and you clean this well with uh, acetone or whatever beforehand, and you touch only the samples and you make sure that you minimize the surface area you're, you're, uh, you're fingering with your little mittens, yeah? It makes sure that you reduce the amount of oils or contaminants that get onto the sample holders themselves. Again, we have to preserve an ultra high vacuum, which is a finicky process and which is something that might actually be talked about in a, another video. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this part. Now, I hope you find that at least somewhat entertaining and insightful. I should also mention that I use the word sample way too many times in that section. Uh, it's actually a sample holder. The real sample is this. See, that's an actual sample of powder of, of some composition. Now, this sample actually goes onto the sample holder and then into this device behind me which is going to be shown in a video coming up relatively soon. I should also say thank you so much for all the love in the comments from my previous video. I really appreciate that. And I hope to bring you more content like this. So you can see what's going on in the lab, and daily activities, well, mundane activities, I should say, of an experimental physicist. Um, the next video is gonna be about that little thing right there. Well, you can't see it. the mic is in the way. It's a chiller to make water chilly. And the reason you want water chilly is you can cool things down a bit. <laughs> Obviously, we are going to do, do, do some modifications to that to improve um, our quality of the, of the coolant 
that we have in our system and that's going to come up soon so i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you again quite soon take care